Hi guys, today I am back to film my January favorites, but I wanted to do a little puppy update because it's been a while. But this is what Missy looks like now. She is growing a lot. Um, when we brought her home, she was only two and a half pounds. She's like 5.7 pounds now, so she has grown quite a bit. Um, my other Yorkie is only five pounds, so she's even bigger than her. But she looks very, very different. Um, we brought her home. She had her face was mostly black and a little bit tan, and now she is almost completely white. But, I mean, besides her growing, I feel like not a whole lot has changed. She's obviously potty trained now, so that's nice, but um, she's still just the sweetest little thing. Yes. She's seriously the biggest love bug in the entire world. Um, she is. She loves to snuggle. She loves giving kisses. She's seriously so sweet. Um, the only thing is she has to get spayed at the end of the month, and I'm not even going to lie, I feel terrible about it because she's so sweet. You're so sweet. Yeah. Oh, it got right in my mouth. Okay, I'll let you go back to your nap. But she's seriously so cute. So cute. She makes me so angry sometimes because, I mean, she's a puppy, but... So she gets into, like, her normal amounts of trouble, so that does make me angry, but, I mean, it's kind of like, you know... The good that comes with the or the bad that comes with the good I guess but overall she's doing really well our other dog has adapted pretty well to her being here now I know in the beginning it was kind of like this is my house why are you here but they're getting along a lot better now they'd even play together so definitely have improved um but I'm going to go ahead and get started because I have a ton of favorites I have quite I don't want to say a lot of honorable mentions but I have quite a few and then I have a couple unfavorites too so um, I'm gonna start with favorites because I have a lot so I have three foundation products I wanted to talk about um, I have I know a couple I think I have a haul video up and then there's one I filmed like a couple weeks ago a week or two ago and there's probably gonna be more because I've I've purchased a ton of foundations this last month I think that I had like five or six and I'm probably I think at like 12 or 13 now like I've purchased a ton but one of the ones that I was I don't know why I was just dying to try this it is the L'Oreal Lumi Cushion Foundation um and I've seen so mixed re so many mixed reviews on this and I kind of I get it um it's really hit or miss for most people and me being oily skin I was like this is going to be a total miss for me and I'm going to be kind of mad that I bought this foundation but at least I can return it I kind of have to say I really like it though. Um, I like it for the same reason that I like BB creams. It is just a very my skin but better kind of look to it. So it just makes my skin look really glowy and pretty. But it doesn't really look like I have foundation on. However, the one thing that does make this look like I have foundation on is that L'Oreal kind of let me down and they did not come out with a W1. The lightest shade that I have seen out is W2, N2, and C2. So I picked up W1. Um, I'm kind of wishing that maybe I would have picked up N2 or C2 just because um, I feel like cooler tones can come off a little bit lighter than warmer tones can. Does that kind of make sense? Um, I just feel like warmer tone stuff can look more yellowy, more orangey, like faster, and it can look darker for that reason. So this is a little too dark for me, which is kind of disappointing. I think I can make it work in the summertime. But I feel like now is kind of the time when I want to wear it because my skin's not as oily. Where I feel like in the summertime it might just be a little too too luminous for when my skin is going to be probably at its oiliest. But I don't know. I really like this foundation. I know it's a little bit of a ripoff with how much product you're getting and everything. But I, I really like it so far. So I don't know. I don't know if I would repurchase it though is kind of the one thing. Um, but right now I'm really enjoying it. The other one is the Rimmel Stay Matte Liquid Mousse Foundation and this is in light porcelain. Again, Rimmel doesn't have, have a fantastic shade range. Like this is definitely very, very pink. Um, but I can kind of make it work a little bit. It's just, I think that's maybe the one thing that really bothers me about it is that um, I just don't like when foundations are not a perfect shade match for me that drives me nuts and I imagine it drives most people nuts but um anyways this has just been a really nice foundation for when I don't feel like wearing makeup um because it's just so lightweight 
it gives such a flawless look but it's very very lightweight so this has been something I've been reaching for a lot especially when I'm like I don't really feel like doing the whole thing today I just throw this on and I'm pretty good to go I usually use my Real Techniques sponge with it too so I think that kind of helps a little bit I'm not pulling out brushes and everything I could just you know stipple it on and be done so I have really liked this um if you've been kind of wanting to try like the Tarte Amazonian Clay one, I would see if maybe you can find a decent shade match for you in this and try this because I really like it. So that has been another favorite. The other one is the Cosmetics Your Skin But Better CC Cream. Like I said, I've just been kind of into more quick stuff this month and this has definitely been a more quick product for me. I just do a couple pumps in my hand and apply it all over my face. This blends so nicely. I don't care... If I do it with a brush or a sponge or my fingers, it is just always looks perfect. I don't know. It just blends like a dream. So that is probably one of my favorite things about this is that it just always blends so nicely. Even if I think I forgot a spot, if I look, I cannot tell that I forgot a spot. It looks really, really nice. So I am going to actually kind of miss this because I am panning it, but I might repurchase it again. I just kind of need to declutter my foundations right now, especially with me buying so many. I want to get down to kind of this is what's keeping and this is what I'm going to get rid of and that kind of thing. So next is concealers. This is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser for Dark Circles. I have a love-hate relationship with this. Most of the time I would say it's probably kind of a I like you but I don't love you kind of relationship. Um, but anyways, I just have really liked this as last month because... I have not really been into the whole super bright under eye kind of thing, baking, all that kind of stuff. I just really haven't been into that. I I think it looks nice on some people, but for me, I just don't. First of all, it's really hard for me to find products that are actually lighter than my skin. And second of all, I just, I don't know, something about it I'm just not liking. But anyways, this is just a slight bit lighter than my foundation or my skin. So it's a very subtle highlighting concealer, which I've been a lot more into um, I think today I have the Maybelline Master Conceal on with just my Maybelline Fit Me Powder, but I mean, I just love, again, how quick and easy this is. Just throw a little triangle on under your eyes, blend it out really fast, and you are ready to go. So this is definitely going to be coming to LA with me just because it is so fast, and I feel like I normally go for more kind of quick, pretty, naturally pretty kind of products when I'm on vacation. I don't know if that's what most people do, but I'm not going to be doing like this on vacation. Which, speaking of this, that brings me to my next favorite, the Lorac Pro 2 palette. I just, I feel like I always pull this out every January and I'm just like in love with it all over again. Um, today I have on plum, I have navy, I have light brown, I have uh, cool gray, um, buff, snow, silver, chrome, like I have almost half the palette on my eyes today. Um, the main lid color though of course is plum. I want it to show up but I don't know how well it's going to show up. I have my Urban Decay Sabbath liner on which is a deep navy blue and then I set it with a navy eyeshadow in here. It's super super pretty. Um, I, it was a picture I found on Pinterest. It had no directions with it but and when I clicked the link it took to like some spam page but I just kind of looked at the picture and just kind of went with this palette and I was I think I pretty much recreated the look. Um, I really, really like it. But again, you know, just I've been using this the last two or three weeks and I've been obsessed with it. Um, I have been pairing it with my Anastasia Catwalk palette, but I think I'm going to get a little bit better about kind of using the Catwalk palette like on its own and mixing it with other things. So the other eyeshadow palette is the It Cosmetics Naturally Pretty palette. I thought this was just going to be a nice palette to like mix with other palettes like the Lorac Pro palette um you know transition colors that kind of thing but I have found myself actually like opening this palette and being like "Ooh, I want to use this color today so then I will center the rest of my makeup look around this eyeshadow I've been doing that a lot so I have been in love with this palette um this too I think is going to come to LA with me but too can we just take a second to like appreciate the packaging and how I think it's stunning. I love this like light pink with the rose gold. It's really, really pretty and it's a cute little palette. So I've been obsessed with this. Again, I think that's probably going to go to LA. So some foundation tools, I guess. Um, my Real Techniques, this is the 
Expert Face Brush. This is just their foundation brush. I have used this so much this month. I used it today, but I used my old one because I'm trying to kind of trying to kind of save this one for a little bit later this month to use it. I'm trying to like hold off using it as long as possible because it's just so so nice and soft still and not full of foundation. Um, but I love this brush. It's seriously I think one of my favorites just because I can kind of apply my foundation in strokes and then I can go through and buff it in and then I can actually go back through and kind of stipple if I see like any brush strokes or anything like that. So I've just fallen in love with this brush and I think before I just kind of liked it but I never really loved it. So this is like the first time I feel like I've really just fallen in love with this brush but it is amazing. The other thing that I have been using and I mentioned this with the Rimmel foundation is my Real Technique sponge or a beauty blender but I feel like I've been using this a little bit more just because I have a couple backups of these whereas my beauty blender I only have like one backup so I've been using this a lot I even used it for concealer yesterday I don't love it for concealer though I think it's just like a little too like fat near the tip to like get right up under there but that's because I usually use my concealer to kind of clean up a little bit too so I just feel like this doesn't get as precise as some of my concealer brushes but for foundation obviously I love it it's fantastic. So one single shadow this month. I feel like I'm kind of going out of order, but uh, it'll be okay. One single shadow this month, Kat Von D Thunderstruck. This shadow is my all-time favorite purchase, I think, from Sephora. I'm pretty sure. I think about all the things I purchased from Sephora in the last few years, and I think this is the one thing to me that really stands out as being like my all-time favorite. It is just such a beautiful shadow. Um, it's like a white with a gold pinky peach duochrome. Not pinky, I should say peach. It's like a peach duochrome. It's really, really pretty. It's buttery. I've worn this as an inner corner highlight. I've worn this as a brow highlight. I've worn this as a face highlight. I've used worn it on the lid. Um, I do have a get ready with me coming up using this and a couple other products. It's just one of my all-time favorites. If you haven't picked it up, I really think you should. I know a lot of YouTubers have been saying that, but I really do think that product is totally worth the hype. At least for me it is. I love it. I kind of want more colors, but I'm not in love with the other colors she has. I haven't really got to play with them in store, but online I'm just like, mm, eh, they're okay. I'm trying to go really fast because this is already like 15 minutes long. Um, next are some lipsticks. These are just the Essence lipsticks, I guess. Um, but this one is in Natural Beauty. This is like my lips but better color. Um, however, if I do put on like foundation or concealer on my lips and kind of mute out the color first, it kind of almost becomes more of a pinky or nude. But it's really, really pretty. They're hydrating. Um, I feel like they're pretty pigmented. And again, they're really creamy. But the only thing I would say is they're not maybe the most long lasting. It keeps getting like skimming over the lines in my hand. There we go. This one here is barely there. I also have one in Oh So Matte, which is a really, really matte nude color. And I love pairing that with East End Snob uh, Lip Liner from Rimmel. Another favorite lip combo. I just couldn't find Oh So Matte today, but they're pretty long lasting. The creamier finishes are not as long lasting as like the Oh So Matte one. The matte's obviously longer lasting, but I think they're really good and I think they're pretty affordable. I think they're a round or under five dollars so I have really liked them. They've been kind of my grab and go lip colors lately so those are two of my favorites. Kind of now onto some honorable mentions. Some of these things I think I've mentioned in a haul and some of them I haven't. The first one is the L'Oreal Lilac and this is in, oh I don't even see a color, Chocolac. But Makeup by Tiffany D has talked about this before. Um, which is kind of the reason I bought it because I was watching a tutorial and I was like, wow, I really like her lip color. I was watching an older tutorial. I don't think she talks about it as much now, but I really liked it and decided to pick it up. This is so interesting. It's really kind of sticky feeling, but at least it stays on a really long time. So I can deal with it being kind of sticky because it's really long lasting, but it is kind of just like a little twist up pencil too. So I feel like when you're able to get really precise, um, but you'll kind of see a pattern here color wise of what I've been going for this last month. There's a swatch of it there. It's kind of another My Lips But Better, but it is really pigmented, really nice. So far I'm really liking it. I haven't found anything about it I don't like yet, but I haven't had it long enough that I feel like I could throw it in my favorites. So 
this I literally purchased like two days ago at Target. I have been at Target a lot this last week. It's really sad. Um, but anyways, I was just kind of checking things out because they were going through and basically like redoing the store, like prepping it for summer. So they were putting out a ton of new products and that kind of thing. And I was just kind of going through the beauty section. There wasn't a whole lot going on over there, but there was like some stuff. And I definitely saw a lot of new products. There was a lot of things I wanted to pick up, but I knew we were going to be getting them at Ulta. So I'm like, I'm going to wait. But this is the Wet n Wild Color Icon Ombre Blush in the Princess Daiquiris. Um, there is a couple other colors too, but this was the one I just really felt the most drawn to. It's not that shimmery, whereas I know some of the other ones looked really shimmery. Um, but I really like this. I think this is probably one of my favorite blushes. I don't know if you really even see this watch on my finger, but it is what I have on my cheeks today. I can't get over how much I love this blush. Like, it's so pretty. It's really, really natural on me, but I feel like if you have anything probably darker than really fair skin, it might not show up very well just because that top color is really, really light. But for me, it, I don't know, I'm just in love with it. It's so pretty, again, coming to LA because it's beautiful. Um, and I like the formula too, so I'm kind of thinking about going back and getting some more. We'll see. Um, this too is another honorable mention because I purchased this Saturday and today is Monday so it's only been a couple days but it is the Kat Von D Locket Foundation. I've tried this twice before and I just didn't really like it that much um but I have to say wearing it yesterday I was just like this foundation is what I'm gonna wear on my wedding day because this is just amazing. I applied it with a beauty blender because I got the beauty blender foundation kit um, so I applied it with a beauty blender, which is something I've never tried before, and I really, 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 really liked it. It was super, super long-lasting. It was good coverage, but it wasn't... I think you could get fuller coverage if you do with a brush, obviously. But, I mean, it was... It held up for 12 hours and still looked really, really good. Um, the one thing I did notice is that the beginning of the day, I looked very poreless, and then towards the end of the day, I could see my pores a little bit more. But I didn't use a pore filling primer, I used like a oil control one, so I think if I used a pore filling primer it would have even better results at the end of the day. So I kind of want to try this with my NYX Angel Veil and see how it does, because my Angel Veil like smooths out my whole face and just makes it flawless. So I kind of want to try those together, but right now I'm loving this. I don't know why it didn't work for me the last two times I tried it, but this is good. Plus this is in the shade Light 42. I think I had heard that she discontinued that shade and then she brought it back. And I think the last time I tried it, I got 48. And 48 was definitely too dark. So 42 is a perfect match. Just everything about it is good so far. Like I said, I've only worn it once since I've been retrying it out. But so far, so good. Now on to some unfavorites. And again, they're all foundation face products. Um, but the first one is the Maybelline Dream Velvet Soft Matte Hydrating Foundation. I just didn't get this. Um, I get, okay, I get that it's a hydrating matte foundation, but for me they were almost two, two totally different ideas trying to merge into like one great product and it just kind of didn't work for me that way. Um, once it finally sets, it is matte, but I feel like I got more oily than I usually do. So I don't know if that's just because it's like hydrating or what, but it just didn't really control my oils that well. It took forever for it to set. It felt very wet on my face for a really long time. I do kind of like the cooling feeling you get when you first put it on, but other than that, I just didn't like it. Also, I got mine in the lightest shade, which is 05 Warm Porcelain, and it was too dark. So I feel like that was a little bit annoying too, just because I feel like Maybelline has been a little bit better about their shade range. Um, for like the matte poreless Fit Me line, that 110 porcelain or whatever that color is. That is a perfect match for me. I know it's super, super light, but that's what I need. So I was a little disappointed that this was quite a bit darker. Um, I remember I had to wear like a scarf or something so that way you couldn't tell that much that my foundation didn't match. But the other thing that kind of just sent it over the edge was I was working that night and this lady was like, oh, I really like your foundation. And I'm like, to me, that bothers me. I want to hear I have nice skin. I don't want to hear my foundation is nice. I don't mind if someone's like, oh, you have really nice skin. Like, what foundation do you use? I know that's really weird, but I don't like when people are like, oh, I like your foundation. Like, for some reason, I'm just like, 
then that makes me think it looks cakey and super noticeable and that really bothers me. So I was just like, nope, going back, especially because I think this was like $10.99, so it was kind of pricey. So that is going to be going back. The other one I wasn't crazy about this month is my Rimmel Lasting Finish. Um, I wore this for like a week straight because I was like, I'm panning this, like I need to just finish it. There's not that much left, just that little bit down there. Um, but I feel like every day I went to work, I was like, oh, I missed a spot here. Oh, I missed a spot there. It just didn't blend into my skin. And that's the thing is like the first day that it happened and I noticed I had missed a spot, I made sure the next day to really blend and like make sure I got my whole face. Cause I was like, okay, like I got up at six o'clock that morning, like probably wasn't putting foundation on the best way that I could have probably was rushing. So the next day I made sure I did a really good and thorough job. And I still had like a little spot over here where I was like, it doesn't look like there's any foundation there. It just, I don't know, isn't blending that nicely. I kind of am over how it feels when I put it on too because it has that comfort serum in it. So it feels really kind of wet on my skin, which is how the It Cosmetics CC cream feels. But I mean, eventually the CC cream sets a little bit and it, it feels like a moisturizer too. So I think that's kind of the difference. Plus the fragrance with this, I don't like. So I think I'm just kind of over this foundation. I did like it a lot, especially when I first got it, but I just think lately I'm just kind of over it and kind of moving on to other things that I like better. So this was kind of a unfavorite for me. Um, and then this too, I've only tried this once, but I'm a little scared to try it again. It's the Body Shop Tea Tree Flawless BB Cream. Um, I applied this yesterday with my fingers because I just wanted like really light makeup. I didn't really want to wear that much makeup at all. Somehow I ended up wearing the Kat Von D one later, but I put this on, I put it on my fingers, I was blending it out, <clears throat> and then back here it just looked kind of uneven. So I went to blend it out more and it literally just balled up under my fingers and turned like a weird darker brown color. It was really, really weird. I imagine it was just the foundation like, or the BB cream just like building on itself and that's why it got darker. But I just, it looked so bad. I just washed it off and put the Kat Von D on and went about my day. So I think that, you know, once this is set, you really cannot blend it anymore. So I think I'm going to try it with a Real Technique sponge or a foundation brush or something. But I really like BB creams for applying with my fingers because that's, I think, kind of the whole point of them. So I don't know. I think once it's set, though, you really just kind of have to let it be and not try to re-blend it again. Um because this sets really fast. And I think part of that might be the tea tree oil in this, but I don't know. Right now it's kind of a flop. So I'll have to see, I'll have to kind of keep trying it out, I guess. But that's kind of my last one favorite. So thank you guys so much for watching. I know this is kind of a long video. I tried to rush through it real quick. Um, for some reason, I just cannot shorten my videos. So I don't know. <laughs> Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. I have a ton of get ready with me's coming up, so make sure you stay tuned for those. And thank you for watching. Bye!